Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture four on the excretory physiology. So today we are discussing about the steps in urine formation. So there are three essential steps that has been described for the formation of the urine. The first step is the glomerular filtration. Second, the tubular reabsorption, and the third, the tubular secretion. So the filtration uh, refers to the process by which the water and the solutes that are present in the blood will leave the vascular system through the filtration barriers and they enter inside the Bowman space, which is referred to be as filtration. So in the kidney, this occurs in the glomerulus. So therefore it is referred to be as glomerular filtration. So the reabsorption refers to the process where the substances from the lumen crosses the epithelial layer and goes to the interstitium. Many a times the substances from the interstitium crosses the endothelium and it enters inside the blood vessels. So therefore reabsorption is a two-step process. One, there is movement of the substances from the lumen across the epithelium into the interstitium and the substances will move into the blood vessel. This occurs in the tubule of the kidney therefore it is called tubular reabsorption. So the secretion is a process where the substances move into the lumen, into the tubular lumen from the interstitium across the epithelium. Here the substances may, that is present in the interstitium crosses the epithelium and it reaches the lumen or the substances can be synthesized in the epithelium itself and they can be secreted into the lumen. There are two possibilities. So this is again occurring in the tubule, therefore it is called as tubular secretion. So after the process of filtration, reabsorption and secretion in the glomerulus and in the tubules, the waste substances or those which are not reabsorbed, those which are secreted out is excreted. It is ex made exit from the body which is referred to be as excretion. So by these three processes that is the glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion there will be formation of urine. So once the blood is filtered in the glomerulus, once the fluid enters inside the Bowman space, that fluid is referred to be as glomerular filtrate. So we do have the blood that is going into the glomerulus where it is being filtered and that filtered fluid is called glomerular filtrate in the Bowman space which which later enters inside the tubules. In the tubules, it may be in PCT, it may be in the descending limb, ascending limb and in the DCT and also in the collecting ducts, it is referred to be as tubular fluid. So there will be extensive changes in the composition in each segment because of either reabsorption or secretion of few substances there will be changes in the composition of tubular fluid in each of the segment then it reaches the pelvis so in the pelvis or later on after the pelvis it is referred to be as urine 
So once it is in the pelvis and it passes on through the ureter and the urinary bladder, there is no change in the composition. No change in the composition of the urine except in case of horse. In case of horse, there can be addition of the mucus in the later part of or in the urethra during micturation process. So before going into detail on the glandular filtration, there is in need to know few of the terminologies. Number one <coughs> is the renal blood flow. So the renal blood flow also referred to be as RBF refers to the rate at which the blood flows to the kidney. It around 20 to 25 percent of the cardiac output moves to the kidneys. The other important terminology is the renal plasma flow or it is referred to be as RPF. RPF refers to the part of the renal blood flow that is plasma. So in the total renal blood flow, what is the part of the plasma that is flowing through the kidney is referred to be as renal plasma flow. Number three is the glomerular filtration rate or GFR. It is the rate at which the filtrate or the glomerular filtrate is formed is referred to be as GFR. It is expressed in milliliters per minute. Milliliters per minute. Even the renal blood flow is ml per minute. Renal plasma flow is milliliters per minute. And what is the amount of formation of rate of formation of glomerular filtrate from the RBF is referred to be as glomerular filtration rate. Number four is the filtration fraction. So filtration fraction is the ratio of glomerular filtration rate to that of renal plasma flow. That is, it is the fraction or the percentage of the plasma flowing through the glomerulus that becomes glomerular filtrate. So in the total amount of the renal plasma flow, what is the amount that becomes a glomerular filtrate? What is the percentage that becomes a glomerular filtrate is referred to be as filtration fraction. Normally, the filtration fraction is said to be 20% or 0 0.2. What does it mean? That means that the 20% is filtered. So, the 20% is filtered. So now we will go in detail to know about the first step in the urine, in the urine formation, the glomerular filtration. So the nature of glomerular filtrate, so what is glomerular filtrate? It is the filtrate or it is a fluid that is present in the Bowman space after the filtration through the glomerulus. So the characteristics of these, this glomerular filtrate in the Bowman space is it is an ultra filtrate. It is referred to be as an ultra filtrate of plasma because it goes to the different barriers and then it is filtered. And it is nearly protein free filtrate. And it contains most of the inorganic ions and it contains most of the low molecular weight organic solutes which are similar to the concentration in the plasma. Therefore, the glomerular filtrate, is, the concentration is similar to that of the plasma except for the formed elements. and also for the larger proteins which is absent in the glomerular filtrate. So this glomerular filtration is a three-step process. 
that means to say the blood or the plasma has to move through three different barriers to form a glomerular filtrate number 1 it has to enter inside or through fenestrae number 2 through the glomerular basement membrane number 3 through the slit diaphragms so these are the three barriers the blood or the plasma has to pass upon so we already studied in the last class the blood from the efferent arteriole reaches the discontinuous so this is the efferent arteriole so this is the rbf the renal blood flow comes through the efferent arteriole and you know it also has the plasma the amount of the plasma is referred to be as the renal plasma flow it moves through the glomerulus or glomerular capillaries we have seen the glomerular capillaries are <coughs> typical because of the presence of many pores which is referred to be as fenestrae so these fenestrae are about 50 to 100 nanometer in diameter and after passing the blood moves through the efferent arteriole later on so this is the first barrier the blood has to move through during the filtration process it is the fenestrae which is about 50 to 100 nanometer the second layer it has to pass is the glomerular basement membrane so we have already seen the glomerular basement membrane is a typical matrix which is made up of polyanions that is it has got a negative surface area it is made up of type 4 collagen laminins nitrogens etc the third important layer through which this filtrate has to pass upon is the slit diaphragms so the slit diaphragms are the connecting structures which connects the food processes of the podocytes so these are the three layers the fluid needs to pass upon therefore so therefore for the filtration process there are number 1 or there is size barrier number 2 there is a charge barrier so the size barrier is given by your fenestrae uh, which is about 50 to 100 nanometer in diameter and it is also given by your slit diaphragm which is about 25 to 60 nanometers so these two will restrict to the size and also the molecular weight and the charge barrier is your glomerular basement membrane where it allows the positively charged particles and it will allow with restriction the neutral particles and it will inhibit the negatively charged large molecular weight substances however the negatively charged inorganic ions are easily passed so the lower sized lower molecular substances are easily filtered <coughs> so all those substances which are of less than 7000 daltons molecular weight are freely filtered those substances which are from 7000 to 70000 daltons are 
filtered with restrictions that is as the molecular weight increases the filtration decreases the albumin which is about 69000 uh, daltons is seen only for about 0.2 to 0.3 percent in the urine that means to say even though it is less than 70000 daltons it is not filtered because it is a larger and it has got a negative charge on its surface so it is repelled in the glomerular basement membrane even though the hemoglobin is 68000 daltons it is not seen in the urine because once there is hemolysis the intramuscular hemolysis the hemoglobin attaches itself to the haptoglobin which is a plasma protein therefore its molecular weight increases and the filtration is restricted if there is increased intravascular hemolysis if the haptoglobulin gets saturated the hemoglobin can be seen in the filtrate and that is referred to be as hemoglobinuria hemoglobinuria so it is the hemoglobin in the urine however hemoglobin may block the tubules and it can cause acute renal shutdown all the positively charged particles are freely filtered water is freely filtered ions are freely filtered even the negatively charged ions are freely filtered and negatively charged larger substances are not filtered if it is a smaller substances it is filtered upon so the next we will discuss about what is the energy for the glomerular filtration so the glomerulus is considered to be as a high pressure system so it is considered similar to that of the arterial end of the vascular system therefore it will always favors the filtration process so the energy for the filtration is given by the hydrostatic pressure so it is the hydrostatic pressure the hydrostatic pressure within the glomerular capillary is said to be around 60 mmhg and we also have the blood colloidal osmotic pressure or the oncotic pressure which is about 32 mmhg which is given by the plasma proteins in the blood and towards the bowman's capsule end we do have bowman's hydrostatic pressure which is about 18 mmhg because of the fluid that is present in the bowman's capsule and the bowman's osmotic pressure is nearly equal to 0 mmhg or it is negligible because it is nearly protein free so there are no proteins that are formed there therefore it is 0 mmhg so now we do have in the stalling process 60 in the favoring pressures and the opposing pressures if you put up on so it comes to around 10 mmhg so it is the osmot uh, it is hydrostatic pressure plus the bowman's osmotic pressure overall minus blood colloidal osmotic pressure plus the bowman's hydrostatic pressure the pressure which favors the filtration and opposing the filtration there so in total the net filtration pressure net filtration pressure is positive and it is plus 10 mmhg so it always favors the filtration in the glomerulus so the next we'll discuss on the factors affecting the gfr or the factors that are regulating the glomerular filtration rate so in general you can see number 1 is the cardiac output or the blood flow so normally the kidney will receive about 20 to 25% of the cardiac output so if the cardiac output is decreased obviously there will be decreased blood flow 
which will causes decreased glomerular filtration second it also depends upon the renal blood flow so obviously if the renal blood flow is decreased it causes decreased renal plasma flow and indirectly it causes decreased glomerular filtration third is the diameter of afferent and efferent arteriole afferent and efferent arteriole so if the diameter of afferent arteriole is increased it will always increase the blood flow therefore it will increase the gfr so if the diameter of the afferent arteriole is decreased it will decrease the blood flow and it will decrease the gfr so if the diameter of the efferent arteriole is decreased it will increase the hydro static pressure because of the back flow of blood therefore it increases the gfr so if the afferent arteriole diameter is increased it decreases the gfr number 4 it is affected by your molecular size we have already seen all those substances which are less than 70000 daltons are freely filtered more than 70000 daltons are restricted and also it depends upon the charge all those positively charged particles are freely filtered negatively charged larger proteins are not filtered however the negatively charged smaller ions are freely filtered number 5 we have the glomerular surface area glomerular surface area so here the importance of mesangial cells so we know the intraglomerular mesangial cells whenever they relax they will increase the surface area so whenever the surface area is increased obviously the glomerular filtration is increased number 6 we have seen the energy for the glomerular filtration is given by the starling forces so it depends upon the starling forces especially it is the hydrostatic pressure oncotic pressure in the blood side also the hydrostatic pressure and the oncotic pressure on the bowman's capsule side for example if there is increased oncotic pressure in the systemic or in the blood it will always decrease the gfr so seventh is your hormones for example angiotensin angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor so it causes vasoconstriction whenever there is vasoconstriction there is decreased glomerular filtration rate because of decreased blood flow epinephrine epinephrine is a vasoconstrictor vasopressin is a vasoconstrictor therefore it all decreases the gfr for example nitric oxide is a vasodilator therefore it increases the gfr endothelin is a vasodilator it increases the gfr pge series or pge1 prostaglandin e1 it is locally produced it is a vasodilator it increases the gfr so the next number 8 is referred to be as auto regulation auto regulation refers to the regulation that is done by the kidney itself so if you see normally the renal blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate always remains constant even though there is wide variation in the pressure from 80 to 130 mmhg 
so even though there is wide variation in the pressure the renal blood flow and gfr remains constant this is possible by what is called the auto regulation mechanism that exist within the kidney so there are two important auto regulatory processes number one is called myogenic myogenic stretch response myogenic stretch response so this myogenic stretch response explains whenever there is increased blood pressure this causes increase stretching of efferent arteriole increase stretching of efferent arteriole whenever there is increase stretching of efferent arteriole it causes reflex contraction therefore renal blood flow is decreased and gfr is decreased the opposite occurs whenever there is decreased blood pressure so whenever there is decreased blood pressure there is decreased stretching which dilates the efferent arteriole causing increased renal blood flow and increased gfr so it is like the constriction of the efferent arteriole because of increased blood pressure so whenever there is increased pressure it contracts and it decreases the blood flow to the glomerulus whenever there is decreased pressure it will dilate the efferent arteriole therefore more blood flows through the lung capillaries it is called as myogenic response because it is given by the smooth muscles of the efferent arterioles the second way by which the auto regulation occurs is by tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism so this explains that few of the changes in the tubular fluid will be detected and this causes either increase in the gfr or decrease in the glomerular filtration rate so the feedback mechanism is given by the tubules to either increase the glomerular filtration or decrease the glomerular filtration so that is why it is called as tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism what is this for example whenever there is decreased blood flow there will be decreased filtration so the amount of fluids that is seen in the tubular fluid gets decreased so the um, the composition of the tubular fluid changes or the amount of the sodium or chloride that is present in the tubular fluid changes it also gets decreased this will be detected by macula densa which are the salt sensing cells so whenever it is detected by macula densa this will initiate ras system so it will help in the production of renin which will be which converts the angiotensinogen into angiotensin this angiotensin will act on efferent arteriole and it constricts it will constrict the efferent arteriole whenever the efferent arteriole is constricted it increases the hydrostatic pressure therefore it increases the glomerular filtration rate